Nigeria has been designated as a failed state. We may not say it's a failed state, but it is certainly exhibiting the features of a failing state. In terms of the kind of violence we are seeing, widespread insecurity, terrorism, the abuse of humanity, criminality, rape, killing, maiming, destruction. We are a failing state. And the solution is nothing than the need to give birth to a new Nigeria. It is clear that the constitution that we have at present is a fraud. It is a fraud because it starts with we the people, when in fact you and I did not sit anywhere to design this constitution. By that fact alone, it is based on a lie and it is based on a fraud. In the past, people could ignore that because Olusha Gon Obasanjo was a fair-minded man and he was a patriot. Because Umaru Shehuya, Umaru Adwa of blessed memory, was a fair-minded man and a patriot. Because good luck Abele Jonathan was a fair-minded man and he was a patriot. So people could afford to live with a fraudulent constitution. But now today we are seeing that a fraudulent constitution in, in the hands of people who have hidden agendas, who hate our country, who are beholden to Niger, Mali, Chad, and other foreign countries. They have nothing to offer us. Therefore, on that basis, we must reject the evil that we are seeing, and we must demand for re-engineering of our federation, for the restructuring of the country, so that we can have a new Nigeria anchored on social justice, fair representation for all the nationalities of this country and an open government based on transparency, justice and hope for all Nigerians and anchored on devolution of power. This is the way forward. Well, I will tell you, in the Northeast alone, more than 3,000 churches have been destroyed. More than 400 priests and pastors have been killed. And there is a pattern that is reserved only for Christians, and that is behaving. Last year, the Khan chairman of Adamawo was beheaded, even after a ransom was paid. We have been told that the so-called bandits, you pressmen have been forced to call them bandits. They are not bandits because bandits do not bring down military aircraft. No bandit has the capacity to bring down a military aircraft. No bandit has the power to attack Nigerian Defense Academy, the premier institution for the training of our armed forces. No bandit has the capacity to do it. Only terrorists have the capacity to do it. We are being told that this these terrorists are part of the insurgents because they do these kidnappings, they raise this money in order to fund the insurgents. And uh, General Abacha said that if insurgency goes for more than 24 hours, some people in high places know something about it. We are not going back in our demand for a new Nigeria. We are not going back in our demand in saying that the persecution of the church in this country is not acceptable. I'm not speaking here just as a Christian. Half of my family are Muslims. I love them just as much as I love the other half. We are together in this, and Muslims in the North have also suffered a great deal, especially the Hausa people. So there's an agenda of fulanization, there's an agenda of attacks and persecution on the church that has been ongoing. 
Look at the nepotism. Look at the way the people who uh, dominate all the strategic ministries, they come from only one side. This is something that has never happened before in the history of our country. It did not happen under Balewa in 1960s. It did not happen under General Gawan in the 1970s. It did not happen under uh, uh, Shehu Shagari in the 80s. It did not ha happen under Buhari in his first incarnation. It did not happen under Babangida. It is only today that we are having a government that is based purely on nepotism, that where you come from is more important than what you know. It is an abuse of the very spirit of our federalism. Therefore, it is totally unacceptable. Those who have a conscience, those who have a conscience cannot live with this evil of the killing, the maiming of defenseless people. If you have a conscience, you can never accept that. Those who share the view of uh, Commander uh, Lalaume that government knows those people, and government knows those people who are sponsors of this so-called bandit Boko Haram and so, yes. all insurgency. Uh, Commodore Olawuni was a deputy director at DIA. He said they arrested some people and had evidence and convicted them, but they were forced to allow them to go. He is not a small man. He's obviously very well read. A university has actually given him a chair. You don't just come as a first-time general and become and get a professorial chair until you have something upstairs. I do not speak for him. I have never met him. But I have no doubt that he is a man of courage. He is a patriot. He is speaking for all Nigerians. So please, they should leave this man alone. He is a patriot. He is a better patriot than those who are conniving directly and indirectly with terrorists to destroy our country. Sir, Sir. as you, you do criticize this government, or radio, or television, and uh, newspaper, Sir, are you not afraid of being protected or arrested by the government as they are doing to some other particular things? Well, you said that I have been criticizing this government. Actually, I, I am not a career critic. I'm a development economist and I'm a very sober-minded person. I don't like to live uh, the life of a critic. And I'm not an activist. I've told many people that. Where you see my bad part, go and kill innocent children. Go and kill innocent women. Go and kill unarmed elders who have done nothing to you. That one, I have told God and I've told the whole world that if I perish, I perish. On that, I can never turn my back. If they want peace with me, they must stop the killings of innocent Nigerians. That is my bottom line. It's not about critic, it's not about politics. This is beyond politics. Sir. It is about humanity. It is about the future of our country. That is my stand. Ah, fantastic. That's music to my ears. That is my more natural territory. <laughs> and uh, I love economics. And economics is based on objective science. Now, there was a time that the, the, the uh, the, the Naira was like uh, uh, one Naira to two dollars. It was at par with the pound in the 60s and 70s. Today, it's like 520 Naira to the dollar. So obviously, a lot of things have happened. Poor macroeconomic policies, poor monetary policies, poor fiscal and, uh, and, and uh, supply side policies. And, you know, Generalized uncertainty is very destructive because we live in the age of 
rational expectations in which investors and others, other economic actors, they also do their rational calculations of the prospects for an economy. And if they feel that with high inflation, continuing debt, uh, you know, the you know depletion of our of our you know of our external reserves, dwindling oil revenues, dwindling fiscal revenues. You know, for the first time this year, uh, actual revenue uh, for debt servicing reached something like 90 percent. So, rational actors know that this economy is getting into difficult threshold, and because of that, it is impacting negatively on the exchange rate. And the truth of the matter is that if you are an economic management team, uh, your economy is being managed by people uh, that are not trusted. People uh, that people don't believe are acting in the national interest. If that lack of confidence will impact ne negatively on the exchange rate. And the sad part is that <laughs> there is no limit on this. Naira can go, I don't want to say any, quote any figure that will have a negative impact on the Naira. But if we continue the bad policies we are doing, and all these geopolitical tensions, uh, we are tolerating evils, we are, you know, the violence and lawlessness continue, it is going to affect the value of the Naira, and the Naira will continue to go down and down and down into a bottomless pit. This is just the law of science and of economics. If we do the right thing, then we can reverse the trend and the Naira will start improving. It is not quantum physics. It is straightforward demand and supply, inflation, and, and rational expectations. Sir, last month, uh, Afghanistan fell to the Taliban. What can Nigeria do and learn from this so that she doesn't fall a victim of the same thing? Well, that one uh, is a big issue. It has to do with the way the United States of America has handled or mishandled the project of state and nation building, not only in places like uh, Afghanistan, but in places like Iraq, places like Libya. The state building project of the United States has failed woefully in those countries. They did not have enough understanding of the mindset of the Afghan people. Uh, some people would even remind you that, in fact, Taliban was an American creation. They created Taliban in the 80s as part of the Cold War strategy to defeat the Soviet Union in Afghanistan when they invaded. So the, uh, the Taliban's understand America very well. So America couldn't really approach them with that sincerity. And America lost ground, and uh, there was a lot of things wrong, bad leadership. Uh, Ashraf Ghani was a highly educated man. He was a tenured professor. Uh, and had worked with the World Bank and the UN. He had even written a book on, on uh, fixing failed states. But he himself was not a practitioner of what he preached. And we understand he has fled from Afghanistan allegedly with a lot of money. There was cocaine dealing going on there. There was a lot of things going on uh, uh, and corruption on a massive scale. And so they lost their moral as well as political legitimacy. Our fear is that the Taliban is bad news not only for, the, for Afghanistan, it's bad news for the world and bad news for international security because they've been saddled there, they've, been, they've inherited massive weapons. America spent more than a trillion dollars in Afghanistan. In fact, some people say two trillion dollars. They've left hundreds of planes and armored tanks. So uh, even though they said recently that they disabled most of them and they can't be used, technically they can't be used, but it's going to be a problem. Some of the Afghan, the, the Afghan Talibans we hear have said, have vowed that they are going to help their colleagues here in uh, creating Islamic State in Nigeria and throughout Africa. So we're waiting for them. We're waiting for them to come. So all of you, get ready, defend your communities, defend your territories, defend your ancestral homeland, 
Some people are trying to tap your homeland. Look at how beautiful Ondo is. I spent my NYC year here. I taught at Akoko Anglican Grammar School in Arigidi Kare. I had a fantastic year. Look at how green and beautiful this land is. They want to take over your ancestral land. If you leave them, they will take over. So please defend your land. Defend your land with whatever you have. Our leader in the Middle Belt, General Theophilus Yakubu Denchuma, has taught us that we must defend our land. This is the only thing we have to hand over to our children. We inherited it from our ancestors. We are keeping it in trust for our children and we'll hand over this land to them uh, in one piece. Anybody coming to take your land, you have to face them up. You must defend your land, defend your community, defend, defend your families. Under international law, it is your right. Our laws and our constitution prescribe the right to self-defense. International law makes it clear that any community that faces an existential threat to their survival, they have not only a duty, they have a moral right to take such steps as are necessary to defend their land, defend their community, and defend their families. It is also prescribed by universal global ethics.